All right, we're going to pick up with the uh, helping industry and labor. Helping industry and labor is our next point here. And I want to start off by talking about the NRA, the National Recovery Administration. This was the most complex of all New Deal programs, and it tried to help industry, labor, and the unemployed. Now, a couple of important things to remember about the NRA. Uh, its whole goal was for fair competition. Um, it tried to set up a maximum number of work hours as well as minimum wages. And of course, the other big thing that it did is it set up and established labor unions, uh, gave them the right to collectively bargain. So it gave labor unions the right to organize and collectively bargain. It also um, set up a maximum, maximum work hours and minimum wages. Businesses could agree to go along with the NRA's principles. If they did, they uh, got to display that beautiful blue NRA eagle and the slogan that said, we do our part. In fact, of course, Philadelphia named their team the Eagles after the NRA, which is kind of cool. Um, though the NRA started to be as being this, uh, this organization and this um, administration that people wanted to hold on to, it soon uh, fell to unpopularity. Businesses hated, at heart they hated, uh, running themselves in a way other than what's best for them. And of course the final blow came in 1935 in the Schnecter case where the Supreme Court declared the NRA was unconstitutional. So Schnecter, 1935, the Supreme Court declares the NRA unconstitutional. In the same law as the NRA, Congress had also set up the Public Works Administration, which sought to build public works and infrastructure. And also included during this time here when it came to helping industry and labor was that early on FDR and the Democrats passed legislation legalizing beer and wine with alcohol not over 3.2%. Um, the 21st Amendment of 1933 was eventually um, added in and it repealed alcohol and thereby ending the prohibition of alcohol in our country. So that's what you need to know for helping industry and labor. Moving on here to paying farmers not to farm, the AAA Agricultural Adjustment Act tried to help farmers by creating an artificial scarcity. Artificial scarcity. It paid farmers not to farm and thus reduce the supply. If you know about supply and demand, when supply goes down, the demand goes up, and so you can charge more for those goods. Um, eventually, though, in 1936, the Supreme Court also declared that the AAA was unconstitutional. Um, so even though uh, it was designed to help, um, a lot of people had some problems with it, primarily because we had people who were hungry in this country and farmers are being paid not to produce material for them. Also, we have, uh, along with the AAA and paying farmers not to farm, we have the Soil Conservation and Domestic Allotment Act. That's the Soil Conservation and Domestic Allotment Act. And it basically paid farmers not to plant crops. Um, or excuse me, it actually paid farmers to plant crops that, re, that helped to reinvigorate and preserve the soil. There was also a second Agricultural Adjustment Act in 1938 that was passed, and farmers were encouraged to plant less acreage in exchange for payments. So again, payment not to farm. All right, let's talk about the Dust Bowl here. Next, next point, Dust Bowl and the Black Blizzards. Uh, a drought hit the Lower Plains in 1933, and as the winds picked up, it kicked up a lot of the topsoil. This is known as the Dust Bowl. It hit and blew away a big chunk of topsoil in Kansas, Texas, and Oklahoma. This, of course, was caused by dry farming, as well as uh, basically farmers plowing up all of this land and, and trying to make it tillable so that way they could get as many plants in as they could. Um, of course, the classic 
classic book about the Dust Bowl is The Grapes of Wrath by John Steinbeck. Um, in your textbook, it talks about the, some of the um, resettlement acts that were going on during this time. I'm not going to spend any time talking about them. However, I will remind you that it's important that you understand um, some of the some of the information that's going on with this resettlement administration, as well as uh, things like the Dawes Act, the Bureau of Indian Affairs and the Indian Reorganization Act. Those are three things you want to make sure you looked up, look up. Um, the Indian Reorganization Act of 1934 was called the Indian New Deal, and that basically it encouraged Indians to keep their traditional ways. So that's important as well. All right, moving along here to battling bankers and big business. A um, couple of important uh, points here. The first one is... Um, when we look at what happened prior tr prior to the stock crash, some businesses had uh, had fudged on their financial reports, and so investors invested and uh, and lost partially due to phony numbers. So Congress tried to fix this with the Federal Securities Act, um, and basically it required companies to report honest financial numbers. So the Federal Security Act, Securities Act. It basically made companies report honest financial numbers. Also, we had the Securities Exchange Commission, or the SEC, that was the stock watchdog during this time as well. Also, during this time, we had the multi-billion dollar financial empire um, that was kind of kept in check by the public utility holding company. Um, basically, they tried to prevent any kind of pyramid schemes. Again, that's the public utility holding company. All right, moving right along here to the TVA. The TVA um, was part of this whole scheme of uh, things that attracted uh, the New Deal, and electricity was one of these things. Um, New Dealers thought that they felt the electricity companies uh, had gouged consumers with high rates in the past and that they wanted to expand electricity to rural areas. So the Tennessee Valley Authority, the TVA, Tennessee Valley Authority, was set up in 1933 and they were basically set up to build a series of dams along the Tennessee River. Um, this TVA did a couple of things. Number one, it helped to provide jobs um, and also provided houses with electricity, all right? Uh, it basically helped to improve the lives of some 2.5 million people between jobs and electricity to rural Tennessee areas. Also, another thing from Alphabet Soup here you want to know is the Housing and Social Security. Uh, the Federal Housing Authority, the FHA, they were developed during this time, and their job was to lower... Um, interest rates on home loans and also uh, during this time we have the US Housing Authority and the US Housing Authority lent money to states or, locality, or localities for construction projects and last but not least perhaps the most far-ranging law in FDR's New Deal was the Social Security Act of 1935 it basically set up a payment plan for old age, the handicap, delinquent children, or other dependents. So again, that's the Social Security Act, and of course, we still have that today. All right, I'm going to stop here for part three, and we'll move on to part number four in just a second.